This presentation is about chronic laminitis. It is in no way meant to replace your veterinarian and your farrier. Very little science is known about chronic laminitis. The disease occurs when horses that have acute laminitis fail to recover. After four to six months of fighting the disease, it now becomes classified as a chronic disease within them. So much damage has occurred, their inability to recover from the disease places them in a state of chronic laminitis, chronic disease situation. The other form is seen in horses which have endocrinopathic laminitis, where abnormal hormone levels have not been corrected or properly diagnosed, and the disease has continued to debilitate the foot and cause long-term chronic problems within their feet. When I'm presented with a horse with chronic laminitis, the first thing I want to do is take a good history. I want to hear the whole story from the owner, complete, all the way back to the start. There's many things that can be revealed in this story that will help us in how to manage the horse in the future. The other thing is that I want to go ahead and do a complete physical exam of the horse which includes taking some new radiographs of the horse's feet, possibly doing venograms, a procedure where we inject a dye retrograde into the animal's venous circulation so that we can better appreciate the amount of damage that's been done in the horse's feet. We also want to go ahead and get new blood work on the horse. We want to check and make sure that all of his organ systems are working properly, his liver, his kidneys, and on top of that, we want to redo the hormone panel that may have never been done on the horse to begin with, looking to see if the horse has equine Cushing's disease or equine metabolic syndrome. Often horses that have chronic laminitis have problems with chronic infections in their feet. It's caused by the tissue that's in their feet remodeling and dying and also bacterial contamination in open areas of their feet. It requires that they have medical attention. Some of these can be very serious because they can finally lead to infections that involve the bone of the horse's foot. When the bone of the horse's foot is involved, the level of chronic laminitis reaches a critical stage. As many of these horses, this will continue to get worse until they need to be put to sleep. In addition to treating the chronic infections in the horse's foot, it's important to try and remove the abnormal stresses that are placed on the foot. One of the simpler procedures is to move the breakover back underneath the horse, uh, relieving the pressure on the dorsal lamina in the front of the foot. This can be done by the farrier, either using an application of a shoe or by trimming the foot properly. Also, there are many devices available to try and increase the support to the bottom of the foot, increase the support of the damaged lamina. Also, it's important if the distal phalanx is not in a normal position and has rotated within the hoof capsule to try and normalize the position of the distal phalanx. If this can't be done by trimming the horse, then there is a surgical procedure which is applicable where the deep flexor tendon of the horse can be transected and that releases the pull on the distal phalanx, allowing it to derotate downwards and come back into a normal position within the hoof capsule. Once that has occurred, normal circulation will return to many of the areas of the foot and the foot will start to grow again. When we receive the results of our hormone testing, we can tell if this horse is suffering from a form of endocrinopathic laminitis or hormone-related laminitis. If the ACTH test that we ran is elevated, this means that the horse has Cushing's disease. It's a disease caused by an abnormality within the intermediate lobe of his pituitary gland, it causes excessively high levels of ACTH to be produced. This, in turn, results in high levels of insulin, which causes the horse to develop reoccurring bouts of laminitis when these levels are high. It's important to diagnose this disease properly. There is a problem with the ACTH test in that it can be normally elevated in all horses in August, September, and October, 
so it's recommended that this test be run the other nine months of the year. If it is excessively high, there are good drugs that can control this and normalize the ACTH level. The drug is called pergolide and it's given every day. The ACTH will come down and when that occurs, normally the insulin levels return back in the normal range. If the results of the hormone test come back and show that the horse's ACTH level is normal but his insulin level is high, then the horse is said to have equine metabolic syndrome. This particular disease entity is seen in horses usually that are very much overweight. Obesity causes insulin resistance to occur and causes the high levels of insulin to be driven up within their bloodstreams. When they're suffering from these high levels of insulin, we know that this can produce laminitis in the animal. Our goal is to try and lower insulin. We do this through diet, exercise, and drugs. As far as the diet is concerned, we want to feed this animal a diet that's very low in non-structural carbohydrates. We do this by eliminating all grain in the diet, putting them on a simple vitamin mineral, uh, supplement and giving them grass hay which has been tested. We usually test it at a place called Dairy One and we get the analysis which shows us what the water soluble carbohydrate and the starch level is in the hay. The combination of those two analysis should be less than 10 percent to be an ideal hay. Normal hay usually runs about 12 and a half percent. Hays can be actually found as high as 25%, which would be disastrous to feed to a horse like this. And that's why it's so important to test the hay that you're giving the animal. We also want to put in place an exercise program to start to make the horse utilize his muscles and the demand for insulin within his muscles. This will help dramatically lower the levels of insulin. It does not require long periods of exercise, but is best if the animal is exercised on a daily basis for 10 to 15 minutes. There are also drugs which are very helpful in getting the animal to reduce. The use of thyroid medications, sodium levothyronine, is very helpful in causing the metabolism of the horse to be increased and weight loss ensues. There's also a drug called metformin, which has been used in human type 2 diabetes, which has some promise in reducing insulin levels in horses. Many of these horses are put on supplements that there is no evidence that it really works, but magnesium and chromium are very popular, and some people feel like this does them some good as well. Regardless, these horses need to lose weight. That's the most important thing that I can tell you. If they lose weight, all of this goes away. None of the medicine is necessary. So diet and exercise should be able to put these animals back into a normal state. If you're waiting for your hay test to come back, or if you buy such small quantities of hay that you don't think it's practical to test the hay, you can go ahead and soak the hay in regular water and leach out a great deal of the non-structural carbohydrates. Hay that is soaked for 30 to 60 minutes before it's fed will go ahead and reduce the non-structural carbohydrate levels in the hay up to 30 percent. We would still recommend that the best way to monitor what you're putting in this horse is to have your hay tested though. Horses that suffer from equine metabolic syndrome also seem to have a tendency to have adverse reactions which result in painful bouts in their feet when they receive vaccinations occasionally. We don't understand how this occurs, but we usually recommend that these animals receive minimal amounts of vaccinations and try and spread them apart so as not to exacerbate the disease. The other thing is that the level of insulin needs to be monitored in these animals. You can't just make this diagnosis and forget it. And the reason is that oftentimes low levels of abnormal insulin can cause changes in the horse's feet which will not result in bouts of laminitis but will continue to cause deterioration of the foot. So we usually recommend that they be checked every six months. Many of the cases of chronic laminitis continue 
to get worse no matter what we do. Eventually, the distal phalanx or the bone inside the horse's foot becomes involved in the disease process. And when that occurs, it has a very poor prognosis for the horse. This produces a different type of pain, which oftentimes is not treatable with regular pain medications that we use. The horse lives a life of total discomfort almost all of the time. They usually start to lay around more, staying on their feet only when they absolutely have to. So unfortunately, there is a time when we need to finally give up and say enough's enough and they've suffered enough and we need to let them go. We hope you found this information helpful regarding chronic laminitis. But as you can see, the real answer to chronic laminitis is to prevent it from happening at all. Please help us in our efforts to fund additional research so that we can conquer this disease. You can make a tax-deductible donation through PayPal on our website or send a check to this address. We hope you'll join us in freeing the horse from this disease. Thank you. Take the time to view these videos. It may actually save your horse's life.